All right, Portland. So, what am I going to talk about? Um, the Flotation Tank Association of the UK and Ireland. Um, not the English Float Tank Association. It's slightly bigger than that. But I guess if you compare it to America, it's still really tiny. So, um, who likes geography? We can go on to that in a second. Right. Um, who's who's going who's gonna to leave in the next 10 minutes? Yeah, you need to leave. Camera guy. Oh, no, we need the camera guy. You, don't, you can't leave. <laughs> okay, well, I thought I'd, I'd just sum it up for you. If you're going to leave, I'm going to ask you to do one thing first. Um, get your mobile phone. It's okay. You can turn it on. I want you to put a reminder in your phone for in one month's time, and maybe even in six months' time. And the reminder is going to be look over workshop notes. Yeah, because you know, next week you might be on a high, the week afterwards you're going to be on a high, maybe the week after that. But sooner or later, sometimes everyday life just kind of grinds you down and you get back into an old routine. So set some regular reminders saying, look at the stuff that you've learned. Maybe send someone an email, you know, check people out on LinkedIn. Okay, uh, another reminder, am I pushing myself hard enough? Are you working hard enough to contact all these, these people that you're going to bring into your business? What are you doing? Are you, are you sitting on your ass expecting it's all going to come to you because you just love flotation and it's just going to happen? <laughs> it's just going to happen. They're just going to arrive. And then in six months' time, it hasn't happened yet, but you love flotation so much, it's just going to happen. Okay, you need to do the work bit as well. Okay, I'm sure you're not that naive, but I have met a few people. So, okay, boom. This is the entire presentation in one slide. You need, if you're starting your own business, you need to have the energy, the conviction, you need to be speaking to people, you need to be contacting anyone you can think of to help you out in this. And you need to be creative, you need to be positive, you need to be working as part of a team, you need to have someone that has your, um, your confidence, someone to support you when you're feeling uh, you know, a little bit down, haven't got much energy, and someone to kind of pump you up again. Okay, so that's what that's all about. Um, uh, you can all leave now. Okay. Oh, there is a little bit more, and I'll try and go through it. Okay, there you go. Uh, UK, Ireland, um, actually there's... How, how many countries are actually there? Can tell me, someone tell me how many countries? Uh, yeah, it's, it's about five. Okay, so we've got uh, Wales, England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and uh, Ireland. Uh, just use that in the bar. Some, someone later might be impressed by that. Okay, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the UK and Ireland Flotation Tank Association, or whichever way around it is, started off with some very, very positive, very um, noble aims, and that is to uh, bring some order to the chaos which is happening in flotation in England. It started off in the 80s. We want to make sure that people know how to look after the tanks, we want to be clean, we want to have, have amazing customer service, we want people to follow some rules so that the whole thing just doesn't just go like that. Also, we wanted to have a, a resource so that um, anyone from the press could come and uh, speak to us uh, or speak to the association, find out more information. What is flotation? What, what are the scientific benefits, etc., etc.? That was the noble aim, and lots of people got involved, and it grew, and it grew, and it grew. Now, unfortunately, it's just a website today. <laughs> okay, may, maybe it's a little bit more than a website in that it's, it lists flotation tank centers around the UK and Ireland. It, um, is that disconnecting? What's happening here? Um, it also sells vouchers and, um, and it also provides a lot of information and other links outside of the site for um, scientific information. But that's pretty much it. No one's really involved anymore. Um, we've got quite a few people that we know that have been involved in it. They've put the time and effort into it, trying to raise awareness with the other float centres and get them involved. Um, but for some reason, it's just lost a lot of momentum. So um, some work needs to be done. Um, so the future. Um, I think rather than spoon-feeding people, rather than a small amount of people, the minority spoon-feeding other centres, say, like, you just pay me... I will, I'll do stuff for you. I think we need to have some other aim to get 
all these other centers involved. So they're doing something which actually directly affects them. They're not just waiting for the float session association to do something for them. They're doing something for themselves and this, everyone's supporting everyone else. So with the, um, the, the fibromyalgia float project um, and the other things we've sort of discussed in this weekend, I think there could be some potential for a, a re-emergence of the association. So that's all good. Uh, and that's the end of that bit. Second section. Spread the word. Um, so I work for Floatworks, which is the world's largest flotation tank centre. Um, they uh, have nine tanks. Um, they've been yeah, look, let's, let's do that. Okay, so they have nine tanks. It's been established for 20 years in the heart of London. So it's open from 10 in the morning to 10 at night. So only 12 hours a day, seven days a week. But we average of about 1,200 customers a month. And now after this... Um, this weekend, I'm thinking maybe we should push the opening hours a little bit more. Maybe we could ramp up the occupancy levels. Who knows? It would be nice to get to 2,000. I would love the microphone. Thank you. Now, can I hold it the right distance away? That's the important thing. Okay, so um, a peak of 81 customers a day at some points, which is nice. Um, so what do we... Do, what do you need to do to grow this big? You may not actually want to grow that big, but the important thing is that you grow and that you get customers in. Activity, activity, activity. In your first days, months, year, you need to be doing so much, you need to be putting everything, your heart and soul into this. And with greater activity, you then get more opportunity. And then when um, opportunity meets a prepared mind, that's classed as good luck or fortune. Get out there, get on the street, meet people, meet your neighborhood, meet the police service, the fire service, your local shop, the waiters in your restaurant, Walk up to old ladies, tell them about your centre when you're at bus stops. When you drive along the street, you know, maybe pull up and say, hey, you look stressed. I've got something for you. <laughs> and give them a business card or a leaflet. Um, get on Facebook, get on Twitter, find who are, the, who are the influential people in your area? Who's the kind of person that everyone looks to? Oh, yeah, it's John. John knows everything. John's always doing the cool stuff. So, okay, let's go and speak to John then. Hey, John, do you want to come to our float centre? We'll look after you. Okay, but some of you may be people, people, other people in here may actually be a little bit shy. Now, if you're going to run a float centre and it's just you or maybe one other person, you need to get over the shyness. Because people can just walk past you on the street, try and hand them a leaflet and they, go, oh, and they just walk straight past you. They blank you. Maybe they just say, no, I don't want it. I don't want what you've got. I don't know what you're selling. I don't want it. Okay, so sometimes that can hurt. So I want you all to know that you've got superpowers. Okay. Should I show you my super? I, I have a costume underneath. Some of you may already have one of these T-shirts. Okay, I heart floating. Or I love floating. So... You love floating, great, that's a superpower. Why is it a superpower? Well, on its own, it isn't really, because you're just saying you're really passionate about something. But if you're saying, about that, saying that to someone else, and you're using that feeling that you get when you think about flotation, about what you want to do with this for yourself, and what you want to you introduce that to other people. So when someone says, no, I don't care, that's rubbish, whatever, you know, get out of my face, then you don't have to worry about that because you know, you've got your, you've got your armor on, you, you know that you love floating, you know that it's good for people, you know it's good for you, and you want to continue doing this. So get out, the challenge to you, maybe another reminder in your phone, get out there, meet people. Can you stop someone on the street? Someone's walking. If you go to London, like where we are, London Bridge, it's five o'clock, everyone's going to the station, they're walking 100 miles an hour. Whew. Loads of them, thousands and thousands of people past the centre. I get out there on the street and I actually work out how I can actually slow them down <laughs> or, or just stop them in their tracks. It doesn't always work, um, but a little tip, if someone's walking really fast, 
don't just go like that. And oh, can I get? Because they they're going to bump into you, or they're going to go straight past. Um, walk with them. It's really good. So just eye, eye them up. They, you've got to see them before they see you. That's the important thing. So he's just coming here. He's just coming here. You've got your, your leaflets ready. You can't see them. Okay, and they're coming. It's coming, coming. And then just start walking with them. And if they say, oh, I'm, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, I guess, all right, I'm walking with you, I'm not slowing you down. I just want to talk to you about this. Here, here's a gift. Here's a £10 off voucher from Floatworks. Do you know what that is? Uh, no, no, I don't know what that is. It's a flotation. You know what flotation is? And then just quickly say what it is and then leave it with them. And go. But sometimes you can actually get people to come with you. It's only two seconds. We're just here. Do you want to come down and have a quick look? And, and you can bring them in. Um, it's even better if there's groups of people. You might think, oh, no, I don't, I don't approach a group. Groups can be more fun, because if you can get the leader, the ringleader, John again. <laughs> hey, John, why don't you come? Yeah, look, look, Mary says you should go. go on, yeah, yeah, go on, John. Go on, go on. Come on, come and have a look. So you just get the crowd to work with you, and they can actually make decisions. So you get, like, five people instead of one. Okay, so moving on, because I realise we've, uh, we've all got homes to go to. So you love floating, and you're going to go out there, and you're going to preach, um, just because it's good for people. It's not even a belief, this scientific fact. So what other things am I, am I doing? What other things is Floatworks doing, or can you do, to make your centre more successful? Well, what we've been working on is making flotation cooler in our area. Trying to associate it with cool things or sexy things. So we've had um, certain members of the Pussycat Dolls come and see us, um, ex-members of Destiny's Child, uh, Olympic athletes, Olympic trainers, you know, million pound a day football players, anyone we can think of, you know, top dance instructors, etc. Anyone who other people might look up to. You may not look up to some of these people, it doesn't matter, but some people do, that's the important thing. Um, and try and associate that with your centre. So, you know, speak to journalists, name drop, et cetera, et cetera. You might not lose all this, you know, obviously we've got to think about our egos and we're not trying to exploit this situation, but PR is PR, and if you can do it, do it. So, what are the things we doing to make flotation sexier? That would be one of them. OK, so this is a nice pod, flotation tank. Um, so we've been around for 20 years, and we've used all of that period of time as, as operating a centre, and also as being a distributor for other tank manufacturers. And we've learned, and we've scratched the head, and we've done lots of different designs, and we've spent hundreds of thousands of pounds in research and development. And about just over three years ago, the ice pod was born. So currently, we have, uh, we're expecting to ship about 40 of them this year. And uh, year on year, it's, uh, it's just going up. So a success story, definitely. Um, wh why should flotation be sexy? Because not everyone gets immediately the benefit of going into this dark, quiet space. Because they spend their lives surrounded by lights and colourful things and gadgets and things that make you go, oh wow, that, I want one, I want one. So um, let's not resist that. Let's go with that. So um, I'm a big fan of her. <laughs> I, I was there, <laughs> and no, she didn't give me her number. So. Um, yeah, flotation can be sexy, um, and we, we think with the ice pod, it's about $30,000, um, and it's well worth it. Uh, we have them made in England, uh, with majority English parts, but also for some of the tanks we ship to America, quite a few of the components in the engine are actually American parts, which is good. Um, the fiberglassing, um, the people who make the fiberglass normally make super yachts, and every single year, we've actually moved fiberglasses now, and it's just getting better. So before, we were in a, sort of a reasonably large warehouse, and they were doing lots of other things. Now we're having dedicated production lines, and we've got people with lasers and special tools and you know, stuff I don't really quite understand. But it's just making the tank better and better. Um, so unfortunately, there won't be a price drop any time soon. So um, I think I'm going to finish 